ponytails. Red, I scribbler. Daring Dash and the Distressed Filly by Chaotic Discord I was scared too. Scootaloo studied the blades of grass and trails of dirt below her hooves as she walked. Just a few feet in front of her, Rainbow Dash led the way back through the woods to the cave they had all been camping in. The Rainbow Pony's swishing spectrum tail kept popping up in the filly's peripheral vision. To think that the fastest, coolest Pegasus ever was going to take her under her wing. And even better, become the big sister she'd been wanting for, like, ever. Hey, Rainbow Dash. Yes, great. The mare responded, using a hoof to push aside some bushes and branches. The gaping wide entrance to the cave was now in sight, and Dash made a triumphant snort as if it was some great accomplishment to relocate the cave cliff, visible over the trees as it was. I was just wondering, how did you know how to find me? I... I thought you were sleeping when I left the cave earlier. Dash's high-spirited trot came down to a steady walk. She cocked an eyebrow, looked back over her shoulder, and made eye contact with the little filly as they trotted into the mouth of the echoey cavern. Dash lowered her voice noticeably. Well, it was kind of weird, actually. I had a dream where I was in the Wonderbolts. And we were flying around and showing off her stuff at a show rehearsal. All of a sudden, just before I was going to wow Spitfire with my moves, Princess Luna popped up out of nowhere and told me you were in trouble, and that you'd run off into the woods by yourself. I woke up and saw you weren't there, so I came out looking for you as fast as I could. I heard your voice over by the river after following your scooter tracks. Turns out I got there just in time, as always. She got visited by the princess, too? Scootaloo exclaimed to herself with a cute bite of her lip. Her tiny, bumblebee reminiscent wings fluttered so fast they made a buzzing sound. Princess Luna really had been looking out for her, hadn't she? She not only talked to Scootaloo about confronting her fears, but even saved her life, too. Well, here we are. Home sweet cave. Now it's seriously time for some of that shut-eye I've been craving. Dash chuckled walking over to her cosy sleeping bag and flopping down on it with a thud. She tucked her lower hooves down inside and gave a contented smile at the cool temperature of the fabric. Within moments, she was happily tucked against her pillow, blissfully unaware of the tangerine filly, who was now garnishing a sudden, wide-eyed expression. Returning thoughts of the horse from her nightmares had begun flooding Scootaloo's mind all too quickly. She peered around, expecting to see a dark shadow, or hear that horrible neigh she had heard before fleeing the cave in the first place. That noise was... It had to have been the headless horse. What other creature could have made noises like that? Even if it had followed her out from the cave, it might have followed her and dashed back in. What if it got her? Or Rainbow Dash? Or one of her friends? Or their sisters? The cave was quiet for a moment. Scootaloo made a nervous sigh and trotted over to her own, slightly smaller sleeping bag, throwing the covers over herself and laying down, trying to ignore her thoughts. A rock dislodged and tumbled down from the walls somewhere out of view. The filly's jumpy heart rocketed into her throat. Rainbow Dash, she said with a weary voice. <clears throat> Dash monotoned. I, I really don't feel all that sleepy. Dash groaned a bit to herself. After a moment, she sacrificed her more than comfortable position in order to sit up, laying on one elbow. She stared at the filly, who, now suddenly put on the spot, loudly cleared her throat and chuckled meekly. <coughs> she kicked off her blanket and put her front hooves casually behind her head. Dense and fatigued as Scootaloo's big sister was, Dash hadn't the faintest clue what was really going on. The connection from don't feel sleepy to still scared was a lost message to her. All right, fine, I'll bite. Why can't you sleep? I, uh, well, 
I guess I'm still just a teeny tiny bit scared. Are you all wired up because of your dip in the river? I bet the water must have been kind of cold this time of night, huh? Dash guessed. Scootaloo stopped mid-sentence. After a moment of blank-faced thought, she giggled and nodded. Uh, um, yeah, it was pretty cold. Rainbow nodded knowingly and got out of her sleeping bag completely, circling around and prodding the covers for something. Thought so. Well, how about this? AJ brought along one of my favorite books when I asked her to, because I figured I might get bored at some point along the trip. I could read some of it to you if you want. It's a pretty awesome story. Dash made a barely audible uh huh when she found said book hiding underneath the end of her pillow. Grabbing it with her mouth, she stood up straight, made a glance or two at Applejack and Rarity's over-the-top sleeping tent, then put the book back down. Maybe it'd be a better idea if we read out by the campfire. I don't need A.G. or Rarity getting on my case about waking them up with my reading. Rainbow Dash, I'll have you know I need my beauty sleep, and I can't have any with you reading so loud. Scootaloo couldn't help but giggle at Dash's rarity impression. She had to admit, the idea of a story, a non-spooky story, no less, sounded like a good way to keep her mind off the headless horse. More reassured than before, Scootaloo followed her idol out of the cave. Dash had begun dragging her knapsack with her. Once Dash had relit the campfire for the night and positioned her sleeping bag appropriately for maximum exposure on her book, she reintroduced herself to the comforting inner folds of her knapsack. Sighing and laying the book out in front of her, she laid back against the wrapped-up head of her sleeping bag. All right, Squirt, figure out where you're going to be, because I'm all set. Scootaloo nodded and smiled just long enough for Dash to return the expression, then turned to focusing on her prized book. Unfortunately, Scootaloo was torn. Wrapped up in the potentially calming story, she had forgotten to grab her own sleeping bag and wasn't about to gamble a meeting with the headless horse or even the olden pony by going back alone to grab it now. She scuffed her hoof against the ground, muttering an uh-huh. or two, before forcing herself to trot up to Rainbow, who had already started to reread the opening of the story to herself quietly. Hey, Rainbow Dash! You think I could just sit with you? Uh, I forgot my sleeping bag and don't want to go drag it all the way out here. You know, since you already have yours and all. Dash had finally turned her attention away from the story and was about to reply. The wind howled. Branches shook and leaves swirled in a spasmodic dance down to the ground by the fire, causing shadows to float along the firelit ground. A moment later, Dash found the orange filly already in the sleeping bag with her. Kid sure can move fast when she wants to. Um, yeah, sure, whatever. All right, here we go. You're going to love these stories. Even I couldn't put them down. This one's called Daring Do and the Sapphire Statue. Twilight showed it me this one time when I broke my wing, and I was stuck in hospital until I got better. I was hesitant... But then I found out that not all books are brainy or boring. Off in the distance, the wind rattled the trees further, and an animal scurried around in the bushes. With no room to move or look around, Scootaloo pressed herself against the warm blue pony torso available to her. Dash smiled a little, instinctively wrapping her free hoof around the tangerine filly's back. You're being awful clingy, Squirt. Don't tell me you're still spooked over those ghost stories I was telling you earlier. Me? <laughs> no, 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 wait. I'm not scared of those silly old ghost stories, not anymore. <laughs> yeah, no fear here. <clears throat> I'm just cold. The fire is not warm, you know. <laughs> if you say so. Well, I suppose this Pegasus can double for a pillow, as well as the storyteller pony for tonight, Dash remarked, playfully ruffling the filly's mane before beginning to read. Just as Rainbow Dash herself had done the first time she traversed through the hot, mosquito-filled tropical jungle with daring dew in her adventure to find the sapphire statue, Scootaloo listened intently, hanging on every word. When the jungle cats attacked, Scootaloo's mouth hung slightly open as she attempted, and failed, to read further ahead of where Rainbow Dash was out of anticipation. When the mare was caught by the dastardly Awazotl and placed in an impossible trap, the filly made the appropriate whoa, and then when she escaped, awesome. 
As pages went by, the strength of the beckoning flames from the campfire diminished, and so too did the young filly's consciousness. The warm rainbow pony hadn't budged since the story had begun, and Scootaloo was sure she had found the comfiest thing to cuddle up to when trying to fall asleep, ever. By the time Daring Do had swiped the statue from Howard Zothel's clutches and left the beast to yell her name in frustration, the young orange pony had lopsidedly fallen asleep against Rainbow's chest. Out like a light, Dash commented to herself in a whisper, closing the book with one hoof and using her wing to manoeuvre the silently sleeping filly out of the sleeping bag. Packing up her things and gently placing Scootaloo on her back, she fluttered back into the cave. She laid the pony back into her smaller sleeping bag, let her own things down onto the cave floor, and then, for what she hoped would be the final time that night, snuggled herself into her bag and let her head hit the pillow. Upon the moon, visible to no pony, asleep as they were, the regal face of a smiling alicorn peered down on her kingdom of night below, satisfied with her sleeping subjects. That was Daring Dash and the Distressed Filly. It was written by Chaotic Discord and read by Scribbler. Okay, first off, apologies for the audio quality of this. I did intend to use my own microphone last night to do this. However, when I went upstairs to get the microphone out, I tucked the dog into her bed and fell asleep with my head pillowed on her belly. So, um, yeah, it didn't happen. So instead I'm doing this here in the acoustically crap room. So, a couple of things uh, to keep people updated on today. First off, uh, first off, some of you may have seen the promo. Um, there have been several promos by several different people from the cast, um, all of which I will link in the description below, so go and click to, to look at them because they're actually really, really funny. Um, the first episode of the Heroic Tale of Heroically Heroic Heroes premieres this Saturday on my channel. It is a project that had been in production since June, when I first opened up auditions. And the first episode is now ready. And the second episode, we're hoping for a Christmas release, because each episode is... Well, the first one is probably the shortest of all six, and it's just over an hour long. So it takes us a while, but hopefully it will be worth it. In addition to that, I am reasonably assured by Deadly Reg, who is the moderator of Heroic Review, that the second episode of Heroic Review will be out sometime this week. Um, it is where several members of the cast got together and discussed much the scaffold by Foxy Kimchi. In other news, um, I am working on chapter 10 of Playing With My Heart. Um, it will be out at some point. I, I hesitate to rush it to put it out just because people want it faster. Um, I'd rather, quite frankly, I'd rather take a little bit longer and make sure that it is okay rather than rush it and give people something they were waiting for that turns out to actually be um, dreck. So that one is in process. Um, what else? I've got a list here of uh, things I've written down that I wanted to say. Um, the Voice of Thunder Lane, uh, MLP Finish Line, or just Finish Line. He was the voice of the Thunder Lane in Do You Remember and Overture, two fanfic readings that I put out a while ago. And he is in charge of the Rainbow Factory animation project, which I hope people saw the promo for that on EQD. And if not, search for it on YouTube. It is, looks like it's going to be quite spectacular, actually, so please, please go and support him. Um, upcoming, I will be doing... At some point in the future, I don't know when at this point, but at some point in the future, I will be doing collaborations with Screams from Equestria and Ilya Leonov. And speaking of Ilya Leonov, I can't say his name, speaking of Ilya Leonov, um, he and I both collaborated with Reva Brony on his latest composition, so when he uploads that to YouTube, I will put a link in, because it is 15 minutes long, and it is quite 
beautiful composition. So everybody needs to listen to it because it will relax you totally. Um, right, that's all the the fandom updates I have. And since I'm looking at my counter now and it's just over three minutes of fandom updates, if anybody is still listening, um, I have a bit of a personal update. Um, anybody who has been speaking to me on Skype recently, if I have appeared short or terse, I do apologise. I've had a few things on my mind. Um, and that is that my mother, some of you who've been on my channel for a while, will know that earlier this year I took some time off from doing fanfic readings and things because my mother had quite a serious heart attack. And she's okay now, for the most part. But she was due to have a heart operation in January. And we got a phone call the day before yesterday, and it has now been moved to this Monday. Which I'm very happy about, because it means that she is being seen, and NHS waiting lists being what they are, it's quite impressive that she's being seen this soon. But it is quite a dangerous operation. And quite frankly, um, being 100% honest here, I don't know whether she's going to survive it. And, well, this is just me trying to say, if I seem off to anybody, or if after Monday I disappear without warning, then, well, you can kind of um, work out for yourself what that meant. So, um, <laughs> somewhat of a less happy ending to this fic than I would have liked. But I just wanted to apologise in advance to anybody who has tried to talk to me and I've either cut them off or, or just not responded or just given one word answers because I've, I've just been a little bit worried. Right then. If I don't release any more fanfics before Saturday, I hope to see you then for the first episode of Heroic Tale. Or for a review if it is ready in time. Be lovely to each other. And good night, everybody. <laughs>